Uh, I'm Park Williams. I'm an assistant research professor at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University. And uh, broadly, I do research on bioclimatology. So I'm very interested in climatology and also the biological impacts that climate has across the Earth's surface, mainly forests. Uh, when I was in college, I stayed with an undecided major until the very last day when I was forced to make a decision. Uh, by the university, and it was a, basically a coin toss. Do I do environmental science or do I do uh, history? I ended up choosing environmental science, but was always really still interested in history. And so then, uh, when it came to deciding what I wanted to study in graduate school, uh, my when I was when I was interviewing with potential mentors, the mentor who ended up ch uh, choosing to be my mentor, uh, uh, Christopher Still, um, suggested that we can do tree ring research. And I thought that was fascinating. I remembered learning about tree ring research a bit in college, but I actually was aware of it since I was a kid. Because I remember uh, my dad telling me about a news article he had read about how people in the southwestern U.S. were using tree rings to understand the history of the environment, going back hundreds or even a thousand years to learn about things like the abandonment of the uh, ancestral Puebloan societies like Mesa Verde and Chaco Canyon. Well, I've been really interested recently in uh, wildfire. Uh, for a while, I've been I've been trying to understand how forests respond to climate variability and change. And it turns out, forests are very complicated things because they're they're living, and every tree responds differently than every other tree. But this one process that kind of impacts forests pretty ubiquitously is wildfire. And it turns out that the impact that climate has on wildfire is extremely predictable. And so we've looked just over the last few decades at how climate has corresponded to forest fires in the western United States. And we've seen this really strong relationship between the dryness of the environment, which is dictated by precipitation and by temperature, and the amount of forest fire area in a given year. And we've also looked at how climate change has, effect, has affected the dryness of the atmosphere and the environment, and therefore fire. And we've found that in the western United States, about half of the area that's burned in the last uh, 35 years or so can be blamed on human-caused global warming. That means that without human-caused global warming, we would have had about half as much fire as we, act as we actually had. And that half is big. It's about the size of uh, um, Massachusetts and uh, Connecticut combined. So I really enjoy uh, uh, the part of my work that involves field work. In the last couple of years, I've spent uh, a couple weeks sampling tree rings in uh, Ethiopia. Uh, that was a really exciting trip. Uh, uh, much of the forests of Ethiopia have been deforested over the last century or so, but one place where you can still find old trees is in the uh, courtyards of old Orthodox churches. They've been protecting these trees for hundreds of years. And so my field work focuses on tree ring research. And so old trees are very valuable. Uh, we go and we, we can uh, sample trees without, without hurting them. Uh, and we bring the tree ring samples back. And by looking at the tree rings and measuring them and analyzing the chemistry, we get to learn about the past environment. And so the goal in Africa is to try and understand how atmospheric circulation and precipitation have changed over the last century. Um, leading to what we know has been a tendency toward uh, a lot of drought. This is a place where, over the last several hundreds, hundreds of years, climate has varied uh, wildly, sometimes very wet, sometimes very dry. We want to understand better uh, how the current drought that has lasted for the last uh, few decades, really, uh, sits in the context of the last few hundred years and what the causes are.